Hello, and welcome to another episode of the 80s version of the Twilight Zone. Uh, again, pardon from, for these not being in broadcast order. Uh, this is just how my DVD is spaced out. So this week we are watching The Trance and Acts of Terror. So The Trance is a very new agey episode. New Age was sort of coming into its own in the late 80s, and this certainly reflects that when we have this con artist played by Peter Scolari, who was a very accomplished TV actor um, and died from leukemia, I think, in 2021. I've seen him in a bunch of like little parts, but I can't put my finger on any specific like this one in particular. And um he plays this um ancient dead dude that he channels and he has a uh, a sort of meeting where people can ask this ancient warrior questions and the trivialities of asking a long dead human with ancient knowledge about your love life is, is sort of, um, it sort of epitomizes the entire New Age approach to these things. Um, then we have the actual possession by something other. And we have this fantastic little exchange when there are two very different messages that he wants to send and the um, consciousness wants to send. Is there anything in particular you'd like to mention when you're on the air? Only that the true meaning in life is that which we choose to give it, and that the universe is not without mercy, and not so jealous that it cannot allow for a multitude of visions. All truths are correct, all creeds valid, and the only secret is that there is no secret. We're having a rally at Pacific Art Stadium on the 14th. I just love it. It is, it is great. It's just such a jarring juxtaposition of, of this little crass con man and this ancient creature or alien presence or whatever it is that, that speaks through him. It's really quite cool. Um, the alien presence also makes mention of how Napoleon is dead. Aristotle is dead and you do not look well yourself, which I think is paraphrasing uh, Eugene Ionesco, I think that's how you pronounce it, who says, but he doesn't talk about Napoleon or Aristotle. He says, uh, God is dead, Marx is dead, and I'm not feeling too great myself, or words to that effect. It's pretty cool. Um, the episode ends with him actually being visited by this uh, presence, and you get this exchange in a mirror where he just fades away. When he approaches the mirror, he just disappears. They're not doing any fancy stuff here with any, with any double exposures. No, no, no. We'll just cut him out, make a split, and then just have the, the talking mirror thing. Eh, I think they could have gone the mile to, to do that. This reminds me a lot of Healer, which is in season one of the 80s version, uh, where you have this person who has a, a trinket that actually does heal, but only if you are doing it for the right reasons. Next, we have Acts of Terror, uh, which starts uh, stars Kenneth Welsh, as uh, the abusive husband, who we've seen in the Ray Bradbury theater, but I recognize him from Twin Peaks, the 90s version of Twin Peaks. And uh, Melanie May, Mayron? Mayron, Mayron, I think that's how you pronounce it, who was in 30 something, uh, a, a drama about family and, and expectations and all that kind of grown up stuff. And her performance in this is very, very different from the one that she gave in that series. This is a very abusive relationship. It's a very stereotypical abusive relationship, but it's played very, very well, especially by Kenneth, uh, who, who does this very scary, um, scary character. Um, I don't think it's, it's very natural sort of thing, but I'm very certain that you can get a lot of of close similarities to real abusive relationships in his uh, portrayal. Um, they have this little effect on the dog's eye. It's only in the one shot. It doesn't come back. You don't see it in any of the other shots. It looks like that. Uh, you can hardly catch it, but they did something to that eye of the, that uh, dog. Um, he has an unsecured firearm hanging on a wall and the ammo is just there on a bench nearby, I assume, as he can just sort of pick it up and start loading. 
Uh, mm, you know, uh, maybe you shouldn't do that, but fair enough. It's good TV. Um, the, he hits the dog with a bat and the dog takes the bat away from him and, uh, puts the, the bat down and then barks. But that is a shot in reverse. So the dog is barking and then picks the bat up so you can actually see it. Uh, they've dubbed in the bark over it, of course, but it is backwards. Um, when the dog is sort of disappeared uh, by by this um, abused woman, that is a pretty nice cut and dissolve because they can make the the shot very static. She is sitting very still, and then the dog fades, and all you can see is one hand slightly moving. So the continuity there is really really good. Uh, well done for everyone. This reminds me of two very different things. One is the movie Colossal uh, with um, Hathaway. Uh, but in this case, she's aware of what's going on, at least after a while. But it also reminds me, I think, of the comic Creep Show. Not any of the parts that got put on film. There are three Creep Show movies or anthologies. But... I am certain that I've read something to this effect, but it's about a a teddy bear or something that just destroys an abuser of of a kid in that case. Um, It's There's a bell, right? There's a bell that rings here. Uh, That's the end of this week. Uh, Next week, we are talking ghosts and aliens, and I look forward to seeing you then. Take care now.